Where does a child begin when there is so much to say to his or her parent? I guess I can start with my childhood. Growing up as a Spurdini was so much fun than I could ever have hoped for. Though my brothers still claim I was adopted and didn't so fit into the genetic gene pool, I know that isn't true. Since I look so Evidence. much like my sister <laughs> and I have my father's nose. I just wanted to thank you both for so many wonderful memories that were made and so many that are still being carved into my memory bank. Unconditional love was always a part of your makeup with each of us. Though I was the one that seemed to depend on it more than others. You stood by each of us during the trials and tribulations of our lives, and never once did your love for us falter. Though my early childhood was filled with Barbie dolls and trying to catch a rabbit in the back fields with a string and corn crate, my teen years presented quite a challenge for you both and a test on just how strong that unconditional love was. That's why she's adopted. Amen. Still, <laughs> you stood by me and never gave up. You made sure our holidays were exactly how they were supposed to be. Whether it was sewing our Halloween costumes so that we could win first prize at the school parade, Two years in a row. leaving jelly beans out on the back deck for the Easter Bunny, or the reindeer hoof prints on the roof of the house at Christmas. At that time, to you, it probably seemed so insignificant, but we remember all of those things and appreciated them even more. We know how hard you both worked to make sure that each of us had what we wanted, and now only can we truly appreciate it, how hard it must have been to keep up with all of our demands in raising five kids. I can honestly say that we never went without, and you made sure of it. You always allowed us the freedom to make our own choices and to grow by them. You dealt with the loud parties that Carmen and I threw and even allowed yourselves to get pissed on one night, only to calmly rise from your bed and direct the poor kid into the bathroom. You took an endless number of phone calls from the high school principal telling you that I decided to go to Onondaga Lake instead of school. And it shows. You never questioned Steve when you had to dig him out of a ditch in the middle of nowhere and even accepted the girl he was with into our family. <laughs> you calmly handled the situation when we returned from Disney World and found out that he had also thrown a huge party complete with black permanent marker all over your oven. You never grounded me for slamming the Zephyr into an embankment one night as a case of OB splits exploded in the back seat. And you still loved Brian after he decided to blind the Air One pilot with a spotlight. And you loved Chrissy for never getting into any sort of trouble at all. But I will tell you this, Chrissy brought me to a party one night with her friends from McDonald's when I was only 12. And all of them were smoking pot in front of me. See, she's not so innocent. You loved us through heartbreak, happy times, challenging times, and times we were just simply out of control. You accepted our choices of boyfriends and girlfriends with open arms. Even the ones with hair under their armpits. When there shouldn't have been hair under their armpits. <laughs> And ones, That's all I gotta say. So I'm and ones that punched That's holes in your garage door. I know what we're talking and I'm about. sure you secretly prayed to God and asked him to make some of them go away fast. You then rejoiced when we chose the ones we were to marry, and as Dom can tell you firsthand, always made them feel right at home from day one. <laughs> that was good. That was good spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> Not what I was thinking, but that's close. No. Each of us have now given you grandchildren to add to the equation and craziness, and even still, you spread your love even thicker. Still sewing their clothes, because we have no damn clue how to, buying them new ones, painting their rooms, caring for them when we, as young parents, need a night out, making sure you make it to their games, 
four-hour dance recitals and concerts, and chauffeuring them when we simply can't. You make sure each of them is loved equally, totally, and of course, unconditionally. I love this family that I was brought into and couldn't have had it any better if I had carved them out myself. We laugh together, cry together, celebrate together, and love one another without question or doubt. We are all of these things because of the two people who, 50 years ago, decided to commit to one another through good times and bad, happy and sad, and create a family to be proud of. I know that when Dad screams at you, Mom, He's simply saying, Flo, damn it, I love you, and all of the wonderful things you've done to con that you do and continue to do. All the years you've stood by my side through sickness, strokes, heart attacks, and losing my teeth. I know I could never in a million years find another woman as beautiful and caring as you. And Ma, when you scream at Dad, I know you are simply saying, Car, you drive me crazy. But I love you and appreciate you in so many ways, and even without your teeth. You are sexy as hell and can suck start a Harley, suck start a Harley with those lips. We love you, Mom and Dad, for everything you've done and continue to do for being the greatest parents that any child could ever wish for. Happy 50th anniversary. Yeah. Yeah.